Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to show you how you can easily style a hyperlink into a call to action button. Okay, so I'm over here. Uh, this is uh, Zipcar's website. I know you've been to, you know, a lot of sites do this, but I'm over at Zipcar and see this nice big orange button here. This is generally referred to as a call to action. Basically, the site owners, they want you to click on this button because they want to track this and this is how they can kind of get you in. And these could be joining some service or signing up for an email or downloading a free ebook or anything like that. But they're called calls to action and it's a it's a goal for a website. Right, and there's been a couple of uh, references lately in the Dilbert comic strip about uh, what's better, the orange button or the green button. And I'm sure there are marketing experts out there that can tell you what gets more clicks, orange and green. But that is not our topic here. But I wanted to show you how easy it is to style one of these uh, anchor tags. It's just a regular hyperlink into a button. Now they are using a little bit of a new CSS3 gradient on here, which I don't want to use in this video. I'm going to do that as a separate topic, but we can pretty much do everything else. And we'll do a little cool little uh, shift of the button here too. So let's try this out. Now I've already got a page started up here. It's just a blank page and I need a button, which I've already got created kind of. So I have in one of my paragraphs, I have a simple anchor tag sign up and I've given it a class called CTA button or call to action button. So I'm going to go up into my styles and I'm going to create a rule for this new CTA button. Alright, and the order of these doesn't really matter. There's going to be quite a few declarations inside of this rule, but um, let's go ahead and start off with a few basics. Um, certainly very important display block. I want this anchor tag to be a block element. Anchors are normally inline and if I make it a block element it's going to make it much easier to size appropriately into a nice rectangle. And I'll go ahead and set the width to 140 pixels and the height to 40 pixels. Alright, so now we've got our block there. In addition, I'm going to go ahead and set the background color and just before I turned on the recorder, I just went and I wanted to find some hex codes for some oranges here and I was playing around checking out a few different ones here. And I kind of liked this, so I'll just grab the hex code for that shade of orange. There we go. And buttons these days, it's nice to have a little bit of a border radius on them. And by the way, this border radius property has now got very good support for um, all the major browsers. So let me go ahead and save this and let's see what's going on right now on our site. There it is. So this is going to be our future button. So it doesn't take that much to get to a button look really. Um, certainly this was critical. Displaying that anchor as a block element and giving it some width and some height. But Let's go ahead and do a few more things to it. For one, um, let's go ahead and uh, do some text align center and text decoration none and that'll get rid of the underlining of course of the of the hyperlink and center it horizontally now for vertical centering here's the trick I'm going to do line height and my line height is going to be the same as the height of my little button container my block 40 pixels so I'll do 40 pixels there and that will give us a vertical alignment. This doesn't work with two lines of text, unfortunately, so only one line of text for this to really look good. And while I'm here, let's go ahead and do a little uh, font size, 1.2M, font color, font weight, and a little bit of text shadow on there. So with text shadow, I've got the X offset, that's to the right, I've got the Y offset, that's downward, okay. I've got the blurriness and now I've got the color and I'm just going to do a really dark gray. Actually I didn't need that other curly brace there. There we go, so now i got the nice big text. Let's try this. How about a little bit of um, letter spacing, one pixel. Let's get those letters a little bit further apart. So now our button is coming to shape. Now what really makes it look buttony though, if we have a little box shadow on there. In fact, I'll just do the same as my text shadow. 
Okay, so that button's looking pretty good. And um, you might even start to say, okay, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. But let's do a couple of other things here. So when a user hovers over this button, so I'm going to do a CTA button hover. This is a uh, pseudo class for my button. Notice there's no space in there. It's just the class that I'm using, colon hover. And I'm going to go ahead and change the background color a little bit. And I will use a slightly darker shade of orange. Go ahead and save that. Refresh. So now, oops, let's make sure I get everything typed up properly. Ah, little typo there. Semicolon, save. Refresh. There we go. So now we got that little hover effect. Let me show you a couple other things you can do. I'm going to take the box shadow and I'm going to reduce the shadow, you know, because if it's pressed down, it's closer to the paper, so to speak, it's closer to the page. There's going to be less shadow and the shadow will appear sharper. Okay, we'll do this in hover and just to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to put some margin on here. So now, there you go. See, it looks like it's getting a little bit pressed down when the user hovers over it. But that's the basics for our call to action button. And of course, then we could place this anywhere we want on our web page. And it's pretty easy to use because our anchor tag simply needs this classification, CTA button, to apply these effects. So yeah, it does seem like a lot to type. And it is a lot to type, but you don't have to type it all the time. This just goes into your style sheet. You now have a call to action button class. Excellent.